2013 town audit. Of course, uh, an important document that came out. Wanted to put that on the agenda to see if the board had any comments on that going forward. Mrs. Wilson. The main thing I would like to see is ta get this right up on the, uh, I think we asked to have it put on the uh, internet. Is it up? I don't I, I just popped it up in. I'm, I'm an old guy, so it says you need a different or something or other to put it up. So um, it, it's the intents there, and I think they're getting it up. Yeah. They've okay. been given it to put up, right? Okay, because yeah. I think that's critical to have it up. I just haven't looked to see if yeah, it's there. I, it, yeah. Yeah. I was looking, but um, <clears throat> I struggled. Um, Sucking <laughs> Griffin. <laughs> okay. Sucking Bridal. So we'll go. Uh, I, I just had, had comments, and I, I thought that it was Im important and to study that. I know you all have, and, and the taxpayers have, and there's been an emphasis on it. But it is, it is the uh, snapshot, uh, and it uh, provides that aperture going forward. And, and just some of my comments, and I wanted to speak uh, in general uh, on it in, in a, just a brief synopsis. There are about 30 things that jumped out to me. And it's primarily we, we, we sit here and we speak to our, our department heads, and, and we uh, try and manage and lead uh, uh, with Mr. Welch uh, an extraordinary workforce. But this document really talks about uh, the taxpayer and their tremendous commitment. And I was struck by the challenges that, that are, are coming going forward mm -hmm. and, and the tremendous commitment that the taxpayer has provided in the last 15 years. And uh, a perusal of this document, um, whether it's an hour or several hours or five or six hours, reflects what an extraordinary job and commitment uh, the hardworking men and women and uh, taxpayers and voters and employees that are, are, are taxpayers in this town um, put forward. And they've done so in a working class town uh, since 2008. And the cavalry didn't rescue the taxpayer. Uh, there were a lot of people bailed out in this country that uh, um, uh, perhaps uh, with money to be paid back in the future, but Hampton workers and, and Hampton small business owners didn't see any relief. And they marched forward and uh, I'm very proud to be a member of that community. And I just had a couple of comments, if you'll bear with me, to focus on that and highlight what an extraordinary job um, and seeing that Mr. Silberdick was in here and represents, I think, in a, in a general sense, all taxpayers, as we all do. But it is for the fiscal year ended uh, 31 December 2013. And it is the annual financial report for the town of Hampton at 100 Winnicott Road in Hampton, New Hampshire, 03842. And it is by uh, Plodzik and Sanderson. And uh, again, it's a vital, important uh, document. It's uh, deserving of public analysis and uh, board synopsis. And it is uh, an examination. It's a major fund-driven, uh, not so much a future balance sheet, but it's a major fund-driven document uh, that is the essence of the audit. Uh, the fund financial statements uh, focus on current expenditures. They don't go what's coming over the horizon. We talked about tonight, we don't have numbers on health insurance, uh, a stratospheric uh, spiral and increase in those numbers. Retirement costs, dramatic increase in our retirement costs. As we go to prepare a budget, those are the last numbers to come in, and it's, it's uh, timely that, that that came up tonight. Um, so if you look on page um, two, you'll see that it's an analysis driven of the funds, but not um, going forward. Uh, GASPI 34 is not complied with per the audit, and that's uh, with our capital assets. Those are being uh, recorded and depreciated, and uh, that depreciation is an expense, and working with the director and Mr. Welch, we've talked about that. Uh, there are solutions to that. They're economical. They're important to clear up this report where there are some adverse, uh, um, not top-notch results assigned to us. And that is on page three of the uh, audit. Uh, long-term liabilities uh, in 2012, and this speaks to the taxpayer, our long-term liabilities in 2012 were $17.4 million. Uh, in 2013, uh, they have increased. They are now $24.7 million in long-term liabilities. Our total liabilities in 2012, $33.1 million. Our total liabilities in 2013 is now $42 million. This is from our audited statement, and this is on page four. Total taxes, license, permits, fees, revenue. The difference between 2012 and 2013 is $701,000. So we've accrued significant liabilities. Our income is up somewhat, and that is on page five. Total government activities, the change in the expenses for the capital outlay, $6.9 million. 
That's a 26% increase over 2012. That's on page six. Again, significant taxpayer contributions to this corporation. Total capital expenditures with no depreciation recorded, almost $9 million. And again, that's an important consideration to do. It's picked up by the audit. That is on page six. Total long-term debt, $25.4 million. That's a 43.5% increase from year-end 2012. That's on page six of the audit. And these aren't my numbers. These are off the audit, and that's why I'm referencing the pages. Investments, Mr. Silberdick was in here tonight. Uh, our uh, investments, of that fund is almost $20 million. They have done a heck of a job. Uh, and that is on page eight. Our compensated absences liability uh, is now at $1.18 million for our employees. The taxpayers are, are working hard to support our employees with that liability. That's on page 11. The unassigned fund balance at the end of the year was $4.8 million. That's on page 14. So we have $19 million in our uh, trust funds or our investment funds, if you will, and year-end $4.8 million. And, of course, there's a change in that with some of the, the recent developments. But that means we have $23 million in the bank right now. Uh, pay um, by this town to the state of New Hampshire, school portion, page 21. This town sends to the state of New Hampshire to educate other children $6.6 .6 million. And that is on page 21. So uh, the rest of the state owes uh, John Q., average working citizen out there, uh, uh, they own a beer. And uh, that's a heck of a lot of money for a community like this that's working class. And I want to say that again, and Rusty, you're a school board member, but uh, um, it's hard to believe these numbers when you actually do look at them. The pay uh, to the state of New Hampshire school portion is $6.6 .6 million that doesn't educate our kids, doesn't contribute right. to our roads, and does nothing for the people of Hampton. And that is one heck of a contribution. The county portion is, again, on page 21, that's $3 million. And I know the county does an extraordinary amount for us. However, um, that's $9 million uh, that's shipped out right there that's on your tax rate. Uh, total deferred inflows, and this is important in this day and age. We talked about this economy. On page 26, there's $2.4 million of delinquent taxes. And I've never met anybody that doesn't want to pay their bills. I've never met anybody that doesn't want to pay their taxes. I've never met anybody that wants to pay 12% in arrears. I've never yeah. met anybody when the lien is recorded that that rate goes to 18%. And that's where that ends. And some of these folks in this town, through no fault of their own, uh, are paying excessive uh, interest charges that uh, border on usury. And Mr. Silberdick was in tonight talking about changes for uh, the legislative agenda. I think that needs a serious scrub. Uh, I think we have our own agenda for our legislative needs in our town, uh, and that certainly would be one. And I happen to know uh, a small town. We all know people that struggle. There's been notes in file for people struggling. And after three years, they're paying 18 percent on 18 percent. And uh, uh, it, it borders on being a debtor's prison, and it, it's not good stuff. Uh, there was $37 million bonded in infrastructure debt since 1999 by the hardworking people of Hampton. Thirty-seven million. That's bonded debt, and that's for infrastructure. That doesn't include other capital expenditures, but that's just the bonded debt. And that's on page 28. Amortization of bonds goes through 2013 is 27 million. That's page 28. Our employee retirement contributions. That's on page 28. Uh, the contributions, and in, in this speaks to the tremendous tremendous support of the taxpayer uh, to our employees. And I read off page uh, 32, rather, uh, January 1, 2013 through June 30, 2013, the contributions by the town uh, for police during that time period was 19.95 percent of salary. For fire, it was 22.89 percent of salary. And for all other employees, it was 8.8 percent .8 of salary. July 1, 2013 through the end of the year, 2013, that was for police 25.3 percent of salary for contribution, for fire 27.74 for contribution of salary, and for all other employees 10.77. So again, the taxpayer is ponying up in an extraordinary way to support the people who <coughs> service and protect us and provide these, these command element uh, services. 
the contribution requirements for the Town of Hampton for the fiscal years 2011, 2012, and 2013. 2011, the number was 1.4 million. 2012, the number was 1.57 million. And finally, in 2013, 1.8 million. I would be very interested uh, for an email on when we received the new numbers. That is a 30% a, a increase you know, within 1,000 days, and that's substantial. And uh, again, it speaks to the, the tremendous commitment of our taxpayer. Gatsby going forward at the end of this audit on page 34, it talks about 67 and 68 to bring these items on balance sheet. That will be what the taxpayer in Hampton has for an un 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 undisclosed contribution for retirements going forward. They, this is a defined benefit pension plan, but it's also defined payment. And we know just from the numbers I read off page 32, so it's both a defined benefit and it's a defined payment, but we don't know what the costs are going forward. Gatsby 67 and 68, and whether some of us are on the board or not, that is coming, and failure to comply with that will affect bonding, will affect bonding decisions, and will affect bonding rates in the future. And that's from a discussion with the accounting firm this week. Finance director is, is pursuing these, uh, these solutions, the 67 and 68 going forward. Interestingly, um, state rooms meals receipts. We already told, uh, heard what this town does for state education. For all the tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars that are sent to Concord, uh, we received $662,000 back from the state for the engineers. For the general fund from the federal government, we, see, we received zero dollars. That's on page 35. Um, our, again, our unassigned fund balance is $4.8 million. And of course, the health insurance rates we're waiting on and the retirement. But I thought it was important for the taxpayer to review that audit and, and to make those salient observations and thank you for letting me share that with you and mr chairman yes, the lack of the state contributing to the retirement you've shown the retirement percentages but lack of contribution from the state which set up that system duly noted in addition to the rooms and meals tax and other yes ma'am wonderful yes ma'am